Hey, can I pay you back tomorrow for this candy? No! You approached me and asked, Hey, can I get this candy and pay you tomorrow? The answer will always be no. Introduced to you in this epic candy selling video, the top five things candy sellers hate when selling candy at school. Look, what do you need? I always got what you need. I found that after I rejected people to open a tab with me, over time, people started to know that I was strict with orders. You will obviously be hit with resistance, but do not let that phase you. It'll pass and you will gain the respect of the people and that money is required to purchase candy. They'll remember how you didn't let them get any without paying yesterday in school, so they'll make sure to pack money for the next day to buy from you. In my experience, they always come back. But just like that one, there's many experiences and things that happen throughout the candy selling school day that gets under my skin after talking with other candy cartel members and if you want to join the candy cartel make sure to subscribe i found some of the most common annoyances candy sellers face on a daily basis i'll list them out to you so you know the best way to respond to these types of situations so you could have a more smooth candy selling day and not having to deal with these types of people and situations let's just get right into it number two can I have a refund or exchange? Every time someone asks for a refund or to exchange something for me, I get suspicious. It has happened to me in the past that they asked to get another flavor of candy because they chose the wrong one and they might try to pull a fast one and swipe an extra bag of chips. I would only accept a refund if they bought very recently and the package is still closed and they're still in my line of sight. Although it doesn't happen too often, it still gets me a little when people ask for a refund for candy. Although there's nothing wrong with refunds, but when I ask him for a refund on candy at school, my red flag detector starts beeping. The indecisive customer. Do you ever get those customers that will be like, let me see what you got. And then you list out what you have and then they're like, no, let me see what you got. Those are the kinds of people that get me the most annoyed. Not only that, once you show them your bag, it risks you getting caught because they'll start sifting around through the bag, not knowing what they want to buy. Not only that, once you show them your bag, it risks you getting caught because they'll start sifting around through your bag, not knowing what they want to buy. Sometimes this creates attention and more people come to try to see what's so interesting inside your duffel bag. And it creates a whole mess just because my guy doesn't know what he wants to buy. After sifting through my bag, moving around the bags of chips and candy, they finally come to a decision, but only after wasting a lot of time trying to decide what they want to get. Also a bonus annoyance is if they do this the next day, like you just bought from me yesterday, you already saw what I have, why do you need to see my bag again? It always gets me. And I even wonder if I should keep approaching them later because they could risk me getting in trouble and not sure if it's worth the quick dollar I could generate from them. What a freaking legend, dude. This guy, Papi Chola, I'll put his tag. He sent me free candy, 18 variety pack of Skittles and Starburst. Let's get it, dude. Thank you, Papi Chola. Appreciate it, bud. Congrats to this video's free candy winner. If you want some free candy, make sure to smash the like button right now. Only subscribed candy cartel members can win. Number four, the tattletale. This plays a little bit on number one. On top of wanting to pay me back tomorrow, they also threaten to snitch on me. Now, me being an experienced candy seller, I could tell when they're just playing around or if it's a real snitch threat. But if you're just starting out, I would generally take any threat seriously. The first thing you need to do is when a snitch threatens is to find a stash location to dump your goods. I've dumped my goods in bushes, in closets of classrooms, in random lockers, in a friend's backpack. I just throw my stuff somewhere safe. Then the next step is to deny, deny, deny. When teachers ask if you're selling candy and you don't have nothing on you, you could say you have no candy on you and you're not lying. When teachers question you, you won't have any candy with you. Therefore, you won't have any evidence with you. Make sure to deny with confidence and conviction and tell the administrators that the accuser is attempting to get you in trouble due to personal nefarious reasons. They might hate you or you are jealous, and this may be true. Tell them that he is just wasting their time. Hopefully, they will let you go free. But now, you must lay low for a while and avoid the snitch once you recover your stash. Stop using your duffel bag and only put it in your main bag to remove yourself of any indication of your selling activities. The change for a hundred guy. 
there's always that one guy that needs change for a ridiculous amount of money. He only wants to buy a 50 cent Twinkie. And the only bill he has is a hundred dollar bill. Usually when I go to school, I bring around thirty dollars in change for people who need change for fives, tens, or twenties. I bring two fives and one twenty. And that's usually the golden ratio to give change to anything they throw at me. I was only gonna do five things candy sellers hate, but after starting to edit this video, I started having flashbacks to even more situations. So let's keep going. I hope you're still here with me and not hit by the flashbacks yet. Number six, people who try to steal from you. The dumbest thief ever. One time a kid came up to me threatening me to break into my locker in gym class. So what I did is I cleared out my locker, but I left behind the packaging. For example, I would take out all the Skittles and Starburst out of the Starburst pack, but I would just leave the cardboard box behind. So through the little holes outside of the locker you could see inside. He was very low IQ, so he warned me beforehand before attempting his heist. So then I just moved my stash into a nearby empty locker in which I covered with clothes. Next thing you know, the next day I enter the gym class, I see my locker slightly open with the packaging scattered and torn across the floor. I see a broken lock split into two pieces laying beside a crumbled Twinkie box. The way the packaging was scattered indicated a temper tantrum was thrown when the thief was tricked. I proceeded to report him to the proper authorities that are on my side, and they were promptly reprimanded. Wait, before I throw it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Ready? Let me know. One dollar. Yeah. Let me know. Bag of chips is one dollar. Let me know. Oh, okay. One dollar. Thank you very much. You got him? Alright, sounds good. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Got it. One dollar. Let me know. Can you go, 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 get drinks? Alright, not right now. Else. No? Uh, since you you do? What? No. Alright, you sent the two? Oh, yes, yeah. I do. Oh. Open the cover. You got Gatorade? Yes. What? Hold this. <laughs> I got Gatorade. What kind of Gatorade would you like? What kind of Gatorade you got? Take a look. Some cupcakes and a, and a gum. All right, sounds good. You can go ahead. Watch, hold on. There's three dollars right there. I got you. I'll give you one back. Perfect. Let me get some. How much are the chips? All right, a gum. Hey. A gum, pack of gum. Perfect. Go ahead. Oh, okay, Gary's too, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Sounds good. Hey. Thank what? you very much. Never forget that message. Never forget what I told you. All right. There. Oh yeah. Hey. You got that green? 
Sounds good, go ahead. Come on. Thank you very, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, you sell gum now too? Yep. How much? You don't One have dollar. Yeah. That's what's up. I'm selling gum. Always sell gum. What's <laughs> going on here? What do you have? What do you have? Man, you just take hey, with gum. hey. Thank you very much. No, I think it's like a Milky Way. It's a dollar, right? Oh, each. Dollar each? Yeah. Thank you very much. Always. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Beep, beep, beep. Can I ask you a question for the video? Oh. Oh. Now I want to include an epic, insane, super bonus. The types of people I like when selling candy at school. And I might make a full video on this later, but I really wanted to include this one type of person. The bulk loyal customer. There's always that one person who buys $20 worth of stuff for me and makes me sell out instantly. Once I had a customer who bought $40 worth of Skittles. That's insane. $40 may seem like a lot compared to the small $1 transactions, but this customer wanted to have a stash of Skittles so he could eat them at his house. $40 is not that much in the grand scheme of things. So he could easily spend it on something that brings massive value and happiness into his life. He definitely enjoyed his purchase. Therefore, spending $40 was nothing to him because he learned a valuable lesson that he will use for the rest of his life. That I always got what you need and for him to never forget that. Now the last thing that annoys me is that you are not subscribed with notifications to join the candy cartel. Then after that, you gotta follow my Instagram at poppychulo.tv. Click this video to watch next or the playlist to get an epic overview on selling candy. Never forget, I always got what you need and I'll see you at the top.